Oh, hey. Hello there. MacBooks. We love them, right? They're well-built, functional, and relatively small laptops. And holy crap, are they expensive. So today, let's buy the cheapest 12-inch MacBook that we can find on the internet. <laughs> okay, well, welcome back to Past Gary, because we gotta buy the MacBook before we have the cheapest MacBook. So let's go to the internet. I like buying my cheapest stuff on Amazon.com, just because it's pretty darn easy. MacBook. 12. Now we did decide on the MacBook 12 because there's been a whole bunch of people telling me how awesome it is and I've never used one and I believe we can get them for rather cheap. Look at this right off the bat, 12 269. Boom. Oh, okay. That might be the one that we just end up going with. Let's take a screenshot of that. Let's then sort low to high. $269. I think that's the one we're going to go with. So let's go click, add to cart, buy. Boom. Here we go. I am really excited about this. After we did the cheapest MacBook Air video, I knew it was only a matter of time before we checked out a 12 inch MacBook because like I said, I've never had one before. I am nervous when you buy stuff like this from a reseller on Amazon. I'm always like, eh, is it just gonna show up as a box of rocks? I do like that it says, can you see back over here? It actually says that there's an Intel Core M3. How great of a processor is that? MacBook in here. It says battery success. It's telling me success about a bunch of stuff. So here's hoping. Let's crack this sucker open. That's dangerous. Don't open boxes like that. You're seeing it with me. Hopefully everybody cross your fingers that there's not just like a, a rock or something in here. Okay. We do have a MacBook. We've got the charger with USB-C to USB-C. That's pretty awesome. 29 watt USB-C charger. Pretty sweet. Okay. We've got not packed in here very well, but oh my goodness, let's get rid of all this stuff. Look at how tiny this thing is. I said the same thing on the 11 inch MacBook Air the last time we did it, but even that was a little chunkier. This feels like the M1 MacBook Air, but just so much smaller. It does not come in the best of shapes. It is uh, beat up a little bit. We have the single USB-C port. Ooh, that has some, a lot of damage on it. Hopefully we'll be able to uh, actually plug this thing in. Look at how small this is, and it still has a headphone jack. That's pretty awesome. Look, I mean, it's so... I think we could, like, play Frisbee with this thing. Does it open? Oh! That was not very... Did you hear that? I'm nervous that this thing's actually gonna turn on. The hinge is pretty good. The hinge is much better than on the cheapest MacBook Air we bought. The keyboard... That's probably the least satisfying keyboard I've ever typed on in my life. I believe this is still in the throes of the dreaded butterfly keyboard from Apple. Hold, that has like zero travel. In my, you know, back at my desk, I have a big mechanical keyboard. So I'm not saying this as a mechanical keyboard snob. Those have almost zero travel to them. Can you even? I like Apple's current keyboards. I do not like this keyboard at all. You can see we got a big speaker grill right here. I think this is maybe how they should have done the new M2 MacBook Airs. Oh, there's a lot of, this did not come in as good of shape as the MacBook Air. We've got the same haptic touchpad as we get on new laptops, but let's see if it actually turns on. It said battery was a success. It said everything was a success, so it should turn on, right? We might be getting a little nervous here. It's not, it's not budging. Let's plug it in and see if that works. Even the charger doesn't really stay. I am not, we might be naming and shaming this reseller because it said it was acceptable. It said it should work. It said on the box that it should work. It showed up in pretty rough condition. And then, you know when you plug in a USB-C cable and it feels like there's that like resistance when you fully plug it in? I'm not feeling that here. And it might be because this USB-C port was beat to heck. Okay, we're plugged in. Can we turn on now? The screen is all beat up too. I can't, it, we may just need to wipe this down with a microfiber cloth, but the screen is not looking good. Oh, no, ho, 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 right as I was giving up hope, we got the Apple logo. Okay, uh, whoo, that really, really scared me because not only did I would I have wasted all of the money on this MacBook, then the video would have sucked because it'd been like, hey, I bought the cheapest one, didn't work, wah, wah. At least now it turns on and we can do the rest of the video, thank goodness. But as this is turning on, the seal around this is all cracked and just gross. And I mean, look, this black lining on the case is like the glue, the adhesive for the screen. The trackpad feels good at least, but it should. It's not like a physical click. It's a it's a tricking you click, but at least the tricking me click feels good. Hey, we got the beach ball. At least that means it's got enough processing power to show us when it's going slow, so that's good. All right, we're, whew, we're as bright as we're gonna get. Okay, I like that we still get all the accessibility stuff. I love it. I love Apple's accessibility stuff. It's the best 
of any company that I've seen. Oh my God, these keys are terrible. Oh, oh, oh. Is this how bad it was back in the butterfly keyboard days? I don't remember, but I'll tell you what, this is terrible. If this is how bad um, the keyboards were back then and we just didn't realize it, I might, for the rest of this video, we may need to get a just a keyboard to plug in here because I don't know if I'm going to be able to handle this much longer. Screen, nothing it's like the new M1 Max 14 or 16 inch MacBooks, but looks pretty, pretty reasonable. I believe much like the new uh, Airs, this also doesn't have a fan in it, but it has such an underpowered processor. We should be fine. You saw it was like an Intel M series processor was maybe a dual core at best. Hold on, what's the battery life at? 1%, okay. So the reason it didn't turn on at the beginning was it was totally dead. Okay, I can appreciate that. What version of the operating system on? I believe we're on Monterey, right? This looks very, mon yep. Okay, so it comes with 12.2.1, which is Apple's current operating system. Now, yes, Ventura is coming out here later this year, but as right now, this is up to date. So is the 2016 12-inch MacBook. You get the latest and greatest from Apple. Like I said, this is the 12-inch early 2016. We get the 1.1 gigahertz dual core Intel Core M3. Man, just thinking about that, the two benchmarks I'm planning to run just to check this thing out, they're gonna take for Ever. Uh, we've got the Intel HD Graphics 515. Uh, okay, what else do we got? Storage, 256 gigabytes. Doesn't sound very different uh, compared to what we get today, which is crazy. 2016 to 2022, we get the same built-in storage. We've got a webcam. What does the webcam look like? It does, everything runs a little slower. I mean, if you've had any of Apple's recent, like their own processor computers, you're doing eight cores at any given time. And those cores are very, very fast. It should not be surprising when we have a 1.1 gigahertz dual core that it's running a little slower. And that looks awful. Oh man, I thought Apple's cameras looked bad today, but man, look how, look at this one turned off. We stressed it too hard when the battery wasn't charged. So next, let's see how this would work if we were gonna plug this into a desk setup today. Whew, okay, and we have now jumped into my office twice now. It's, my chair is starting to get sick of it. So we've got the 12 inch MacBook. Let's see how it plugs into just a normal desk setup if you wanna use this as your only computer. Unplug my normal dock from my MacBook Pro 16. Boom, we're plugged in. So my normal dock will not work with the MacBook. It does not work with Thunderbolt accessories. Thank goodness it tells me that. Hold on. Ooh. Okay, we've got an older just USB-C accessory. So let's see how this works. So you go in there. Okay, hey, it looks like it is. The reason we're checking this like this is if you remember from the MacBook Air video, it had a problem with external displays and this looks like it may not have any bit of a problem. Yeah, look at that, it works perfectly fine. Now from the tech specs that I saw about this, it should work with one external display and then they call it dual displays because you can do an external display and the MacBook at the same time. So two displays, but it doesn't work with two external displays. So it does work. I mean, there is a little bit of a, you can tell it's a little more juddery up here on the top screen. So this is probably not doing a 60 Hertz refresh rate. Let's see if we can tell what it's actually doing. Oh my God, I hate this keyboard. I cannot overstate that. Uh, it is the worst. I have ever used from Apple. Okay, 30 Hertz. Yeah, so the best you're gonna get is 30 Hertz. So it will look, if you are used to at least a 60 Hertz display, like my main display is 60 Hertz, you will notice that it's a little more like janky. But if you're just browsing website or you're doing word processing, this is gonna be perfectly fine. Let's go look at some cameras. That's essentially what I do with my time all day long as I just look at camera stuff to buy. So can this computer do that for me? Probably not gonna buy anything because we just bought a MacBook, but I would like to buy me a cinema camera. Yeah, I mean, the websites are all, they're working smoothly enough. You know, I'm never one to like have a bunch of tabs open, but here, now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. We've got 20 tabs open. You can already, we're not even to 10 yet and we are really starting to tax the CPU quite a bit. You can see it's starting to slow down pretty, pretty seriously. I mean, right over here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight tabs with an active website up and we are at, like a 70% CPU load 
That's what happens when you get 1.1 gigahertz dual cores. It is working, but it's working way slower than normal. If you were just gonna do single tasks at a time, I think you'd be perfectly fine. But again, this is not gonna work like an M2 or an M1 computer because those computers have eight core CPUs with really good processing power. But let's actually check out and see what we can do. What kind of benchmarks can we get out of this computer? Let's head back to the studio. Okay, back in the studio, we got the MacBook Air. Let's actually check out and see. I downloaded a couple of benchmarks. Let's just see comparatively, how does the 12 inch actually stack up? So let's start off. We will open up Cinebench and we will open up the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. Neither are that important and benchmarks aren't really that important for this kind of a computer in the first place. Obviously it's gonna run slower than modern hardware, but I'm curious. Can you see that? Now this is essentially empty. I haven't put anything on here except the benchmarking tools. And we're getting about 640 megabits per second for the write, and it looks like we're getting about 800 for the read. That's not great. There could be issues with this specific solid state drive because of how old it is, but that's slower than my server and my server runs over ethernet. It's 10 gigabit ethernet, but modern solid state drives run way faster than this. Even like the M2 MacBook Air, the cheapest one that has the worst SSD ever. Um, even that runs way faster than this. I mean, you're never gonna use this for video editing anyway, so all of this stuff doesn't matter. It will just be a little slower if you're trying to transfer files on here because the solid state drive is slow, but we spent not that much money on it, so shocking, shocking, shocking. Okay, let's go over to Cinebench R23. We're not gonna sit here for the whole thing because this will take forever, especially the single core. But I would just like to see, you know, one full render test out of it, where we kind of drop on this. I mean, you can see up here at the top, we've got a 32 core, 64 thread, three gigahertz AMD Ryzen Threadripper 2. Like even at the lowest on this, we've got a four core, eight thread, 1.69 gigahertz 11th gen Intel Core i7. Let's just let's just see and look at this even while we're running this and I just have nothing to do. I'm I'm not kidding when I say I look at cameras all day long. I'm not playing a game in my idle time. I'm looking at cameras. I need help. Looks like we're just about done with this first pass and the computer itself is getting kind of warm. Remember much like the MacBook Air, this doesn't have a cooling system, so it's probably throttling fairly hard uh, to get this to go because as you can even see this is a 10 minute test and normally if you run this with a modern computer it will do lots of cycles of the multi-threaded uh, workflow whereas it's going to take us longer than 10 minutes to get through the first one that's not that's not a good sign okay we made it through 1303 which I guess is not terrible considering that it is a two core, four thread processor. It's scoring about a third less than a, an 11th gen Intel. So not terrible, not great. Obviously you would not be using this for any sort of power tasks, but I don't find that to be terrible. I wanna see, let's actually check the battery real quick and then we're gonna crack this thing open. 484 cycles on this thing. This has a 4349 milliamp hour battery. So they did not put in a new battery when they refurbished this thing. So let's turn it off, crack it open and see what we could upgrade ourselves. It's one of the cool things we did with the 11 inch MacBook. Let's see what we can do with the 12 inch Mac. I'm not very impressed with the refurbishing company for this one. I was pretty impressed with how well the MacBook Air was when we ordered that one. And that was only like 180 bucks. This is almost $100 more. I get that it's newer, but I'm not enjoying this experience as much. It's not Apple's fault, it's the refurbishing company's fault. Either. There we go. Pop, pop, pop. Okay, this is much different than the 11 inch. There's some things we gotta, okay, we undid that one. Okay, unplugged that, unplugged that. Well, we won't unplug. It looks like we've just needed to really unplug these so we can see the internals of this. Okay, it is f much different than the MacBook Air. Obviously this is when Apple has upgraded. They, they did a lot of improvements on the 12 inch MacBook where they started moving towards what they've got today for their hardware internals. You can see here's the speakers. Impressive to have this size of a speaker on this small of a laptop body. We got the batteries all around here. It's like they jam packed the battery everywhere. Here's the force touch. Like I said, it's not a real click. It's a fake click. They do all of that right here. Here's the logic board. Is this the Wi-Fi chip over here? It's just fascinating to see all this stuff on the insides. The problem is though, there's nothing in here that we can easily 
replaced. Like with the MacBook Air, we were able to replace the solid state drive, we were able to replace the battery. I don't believe we're gonna have such an easy time upgrading this, much like Apple's current laptops, which is unfortunate. I would like to see you know, us going back towards being able to fix these or upgrade them ourselves, but with as complicated as laptops have gotten, and they've gotten, well, tech in general, with as complicated as tech in general has gotten, it's getting really, really hard to be able to upgrade these or, or fix them ourselves just because of how just crazy complicated it is. Let's plug this back in. And I think we will have had a pretty good showing today. Would I recommend you go buy the cheapest 12 inch MacBook? No, I probably wouldn't. Uh, for, this was closer to $300 than the MacBook Air. I thought the MacBook Air was actually a pretty good deal if all you wanted was Mac OS and maybe you wanted to browse the internet a little bit. Maybe this is a great computer. I haven't had a chance to use this too much yet. The seller kind of just turned me off on this. So no, I would not recommend you go out and get a 12 inch MacBook. And if you like this video, hit subscribe and then click here to watch the other cheapest MacBook, the MacBook Air that we were able to find for under $200. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.